let's start from the top. The online, quote, civil war, end quote, between Sussex Squad and Team Wells is honestly so depressing, tiring, and childish. These people are family. None of them ever attack the other. Okay? This is the thing here. Never attack the other. It's only people online here on Twitter who spread hate on both sides. It's causing strife so then this person must have been um, completely blind of everything that happened it's pretty wild memory but awesome pretty wild memory but awesome there's megan lawsuit the brother uh backstabbing what it means is that a senior figure in the royal household according to mel on sunday was passing him information uh, in order to help defeat the Duchess's case. There's Megan Lawsuit, the brother uh, backstabbing. have been, as we know, is that the Mail on Sunday had the ruling against them in February and they were then appealing it. So it was lawyers from the Mail on Sunday who would have approached Jason Naff knowing that these emails and messages existed. Mm. That would have been the point and unless, I mean, the most likely outcome is that Jason obviously would have then gone to William and Kate and clearly he has cooperated. He would not have cooperated he would not have with those without lawyers their without their definite knowledge. Um, Camilla, we should talk about these texts, these text messages, Meghan and Harry text messages to her father. Um, in documents filed at the High Court on Friday but made public yesterday, laid bare emotional text messages between her, Harry and her father as they pleaded with him to accept help ahead of the royal wedding. It's a pretty wild memory, but awesome. Um, this is kind of goes against everything that we were led to believe happened, that they sort of left her father, didn't offer any support, any help, any contact leading up to the wedding. It's a pretty wild memory, but awesome. Um, so a lot of people would be quite surprised by seeing these messages today. Yes, exactly. This is the opening salvo in their court case against the Mail on Sunday and the Mail, who um, viewers might remember, published this intimate letter between Meghan and her father, laying bare her emotions around his behaviour in the run-up to the wedding. It's been, as we know, is that the Mail on Sunday had the ruling against them in February, and they were then appealing it. So it was lawyers from the Mail on Sunday who would have approached Jason Naff, knowing that these emails and messages existed. This is the opening salvo in their court case against the Mail on Sunday and the Mail, who, um, viewers might remember, published this intimate letter between Meghan and her father, laying bare her emotions around his behaviour in the run-up to the wedding. Mm. That would have been the point, unless, I mean, the most likely outcome is that Jason obviously would have then gone to William and Kate. Sunday in the Mail, who um, viewers might remember, published this intimate letter between Meghan and her father, laying bare her emotions around his behaviour in the run-up to the wedding. And clearly he has cooperated. He would not have cooperated he would not have with those without lawyers their without their definite knowledge. All of the time it had been asserted really by Thomas Markle and the newspaper that they hadn't offered any help, they'd just cast him adrift. It's a pretty wild memory, but awesome. Um, down in New Mexico and he got, ran into trouble because he didn't have any support. It's a pretty wild memory, but awesome. Second of all, while I think that the texts do lay bare they, their side of the story, and that's what this quest against the press is all about, this idea that there should be balance in reporting, what's counterintuitive about it is the fact that this is about a breach of tri privacy. This is about the fact that this letter that Meghan penned to her father was exposed in the public. What it means is that a senior figure in the royal household, according to Mel on Sunday, was passing him information uh, in order to help defeat the Duchess's case. I mean, the most likely outcome is that Jason obviously would have then gone to William and Kate and clearly he has cooperated. He would not have cooperated he would not have with those without lawyers their without their definite knowledge. Okay, helping the person who Megan was uh, suing, okay, Megan is Harry's wife, but he felt the need to insert himself into Megan's business to help the person that Megan was suing. Okay, we forget all about that. It's a pretty wild memory, but awesome. Markle and Prince Harry continue their good deeds in Los Angeles by delivering food to people in need. 
they're launching an attack against British newspapers. In a letter, they've declared that they are ceasing all cooperation now, accusing four tabloids of publishing stories that were distorted, false, and invasive beyond reason. Meghan Markle is also revealing in court documents the text messages exchanged between herself, Harry, and her estranged father, Thomas Markle, in the days leading up to the royal wedding. Okay, we forgot all about that. I've been reaching out to you all weekend, but you're not taking any of our calls or replying to any texts. Very concerned about your health and safety, goes one text that Meghan says she sent to her father. And Prince Harry sent this text. Really need to speak to you. You do not need to apologize. If you love Meg and want to make it right, please call me. I mean, the most likely outcome is that Jason obviously would have then gone to William and Kate. He reportedly never responded. The text messages are part of a lawsuit alleging a newspaper misquoted Meghan to portray her in a negative light. Is growing outrage after Meghan Markle's own brother begs Prince Harry to cancel the royal wedding. And the whole thing was a plan to actually mess up the wedding. Writing, it's not too late. Meghan Markle is obviously not the right woman for you. And the whole thing was a plan to actually mess up the wedding. Writes Thomas Markle in a shocking handwritten letter he sent directly <laughs> to Prince Harry. This is the biggest mistake in royal wedding history. And the whole thing was a plan to actually mess up the wedding. He adds, it's very apparent that her tiny bit of Hollywood fame has gone to her head, changing her into a jaded, shallow, conceited woman that will make a joke of you and the royal family heritage. And the whole thing was a plan to actually mess up the wedding. Royal expert Victoria Arbiter. Doing a post-match analysis of Harry and Meghan's interview with Oprah, which is obviously coming out in a few days' time. My name is Victoria Arbiter, A-R, B as in boy, I-T-E-R, and I am royal commentator to for CNN. What was your reaction reading something that is so nasty? Do you know, I have to be honest, I was appalled and then I thought this can't be real. Because aside from the fact that it's a family member writing this, what kind of person you have to wonder is going to do that, not only to their sister, but to their sister so publicly a couple of weeks before her wedding. The whole thing to me just smacked of ugliness. Doing a post-match analysis of Harry and Meghan's interview with Oprah, which is obviously coming out in a few days' time. My name is Victoria Arbiter, A-R, B as in boy, I-T-E-R, and I am royal commentator for CNN. The letter is a far cry from what Thomas, who shares the same dad with Meghan, told Inside Edition last year. And the whole thing was a plan to actually mess up the wedding. Prince Harry, you're, you're a really lucky guy to have her. I mean, she is... She is 110% and she is just one of a kind and and you could not ask for a better woman. In the letter which Markle gave to In Touch magazine on Stands Now, the 51-year-old lashes out at Megan for not inviting her family members to the wedding. And the whole thing was a plan to actually mess up the wedding. The 51-year-old lashes out at Megan for not inviting her family members to the wedding. And clearly he has cooperated. He would not have cooperated he would not have with those without lawyers their without their definite knowledge. Between Sussex Squad and Team Wells is honestly so depressing, tiring and childish. These people are family. None of them ever attack the other. Okay, this is the thing here. Never attack the other. It's only people online here on Twitter who spread hate on both sides. It's causing nothing but needless strife. So they, this person must have been um, completely blind of everything that happened. Set and of course the photographs were a setup. I was uh, uh, set up by a guy named Jeff Rayner and um, um, uh, another guy named Dylan Howard who was uh, with American media, I think. And the whole thing was a plan to actually mess up the wedding. Uh, I was just part of it, basically. Were you both as surprised as everybody else when he appeared on television? Because we'd known about it, but obviously no announcement of it. Absolutely. I think it was quite a big surprise. I think it was definitely a surprise to uh, the palaces and indeed to Meghan Markle, because she didn't know, I don't think, that her mm. father had spoken to you guys Center. And of course, the photographs were a setup. I was uh, uh, set up by a guy named Jeff Rayner and um, um, 
uh, another guy named Dylan Howard, who was uh, with American Media, I think. And the whole thing was a plan to actually mess up the wedding. The royals own me. The royals own me. Okay, we forgot all about that. Huh? All right, so let's read some of the comments. Kate weaponized her white woman tears against Megan. She never once asked the media to stop writing about Megan making her cry. Kate is racist. Okay, no one's paying Grenada's any mind as if she was locked in box and missed what the world did. UK media is part in it and the effing trolls keep jumping up every time Harry and Megan do something. They just like, we wish you stuck up type, get over it and leave them alone. Okay, there's this here, there's that. Well, uh, I hate when they do all of this. Okay, one side and no one's co uh, competing. The Wells is watching. There's a second face. Sussex Squad move on, but there's a looking, the clown. Harry and Megan, zero engagement. There's this space. Um, and it's been three years gone. There's that. There's no civil war. Unbothered, thriving, booked and busy. Sure, there's uh, neither the train shall meet. Okay, I think I read it in one of my videos, so more people are adding. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to go to the part where me and, and this person is interacting. All right, there's this here. Okay, you're right, it's childish. However, childish behavior must dealt with. The Sussexes left UK and minding their business, but the Cambridges continue. The Cambridges want its spotlight. They have all the UK for themselves. They should leave the Sussexes alone to deal with the rest of the world. Defending is key. Alright, so the person came back. Here, yeah, the prince and princess of Wales are the future king and queen, of course. They need to also represent the monarchy internationally. It was never they, but the British press who hound Harry and Meghan. But all of them had the power to say something and stop it. But all of them just sat back and enjoyed the ride. Let them hounding on Harry and Meghan. And clearly he has cooperated. He would not have cooperated he would not have with those without lawyers their without their definite knowledge. Okay, even, okay, I have that, uh, uh, how do you call this, that clip where the officer who said they bend the rule for uh, Andrew, but they won't do a damn thing. We don't even need them to bend the rule for Megan and Harry, especially Megan. Okay, just tell the truth. So, after that, obviously, those sort of issues we had with him, we would just let women in, didn't ask questions because we just did not want the grief. I mean, complaints were made about him. You know, he was a rude, obnoxious, horrible individual, but no one was going to take a complaint <laughs> to the royal household because he's the Queen's favourite. So we just had to bend the rules for him and breach security. Just tell the truth. They can't even do that for her. All right, the British press is not the monarchy's back and call by any means but guess what much of the negativity towards the couple is coming from within the royal family the royal family and staff of the royal family are the ones that are very often leaking these stories to the press i mean the, the most likely outcome is that jason obviously would have then gone to william and kate jason obviously would have then gone to william and kate and clearly he has cooperated he would not have cooperated he would not have with those without lawyers their without their definite knowledge and then we have, uh, I have a screenshot of Charles taking William to parties to the media so they could get cozy up. Okay, so there's me here responding, blah, 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 whatever. So he came back again, or she, whatever, providing my point. It's people like you on both sides who refuse to listen to anything anyone has to say, which differs even slightly from your preconception, do you really think this sort of dirt flinging is what Harry and Meghan want? Okay, there's me. This is the recent one that I just put here. Full, we heard loud and clear. As recently at the Queen's funeral, the entire time they were there, your people did not let up. Listen to what? Listen to the BS your people are saying, and we're supposed to sit back and relax and enjoy the mistreatment? Why are you worrying about Meghan and Harry? They left the UK mining their business. All right. I could have write more, but that's it. Did she respond back? 
All right, let's see. Wong the pass. Okay, this person came back. Wong the palace leaks against Harry and Meghan as they did with Diana. Kate appears to be a mean girl, and William has presented as a self-centered bully. Thankfully, the Sussexes have the Sussex squad. Royal. All right, so there's that. Oh, there's more. Okay, the derangers started this war. They were attacking Harry and Meghan since 2017 for the smallest reason. Now it's 2022 and they're still attacking them for just existing. We also want this war to end, but we ain't going nowhere. If the Sussex squad should leave, the derangers will still attack Harry and Meghan. This is the thing. With the nonsense that's going with Twitter, they thought the squad would leave. However, right? this is why I don't claim my Grenadian side. Don't be such a royal F bag. All right, there's the uh, rolling eye. It's time for you to go back and take an honest look at what happened and still happening. You are spouting nothing but needless garbage. <laughs> they thought the squad left and then they could come and, uh, was it? Uh, clean slate. Like people who hopped on on Twitter don't know what happened before that but the squad here to put the you know to respond unto her stupidness or his stupidness please stop also please note how civil my request is what i want to say my just could burn you baby hot and hard so please just stop okay so i don't know what that mean have you noticed the two comments you received were both venom and from the sussex squad Okay, they use the race card. Okay, I don't know, but we're just responding back to them. Attacking Catherine. Who? We, you know, with Twitter, you guys could pretend to be anything you want. You could pretend to respond as if you were the squad so you could make your point. So the squad never really starts something if you guys don't start. We're here to defend. Okay? Many times, we black many of your asses so we don't have to see your nonsense. Who's attacking Catherine? Who has done nothing? Yeah, she's mute. She stay quiet and let all this nonsense happening when she could put a stop to it. One of the reasons threaten the life of children. Who? As a matter of I'm fact, I try to avoid talking about their children. Accuse the family of killing the queen. Oh, whatever. They fast forwarded and a barrage of abuse and daxing royalists. Okay, stop using the white supremacist card. Then people were need to raise the issue of racism threaten the life of children who as a matter of fact i try to avoid talking about their children accuse the family of killing the queen oh whatever they fast forwarded and a barrage of abuse and daxing royalists stop using the white supremacist card then people need to raise the issue of racism it's that simple it comes to sort of institutional and systemic racism it's there and it stays there because someone somewhere is benefiting from it. We can't deny or ignore the fact that all of us have been brought up and educated to see the world differently. For all of us, all we want to do is be able to carry out um, the right engagements, carry out our work and try and encourage others and the younger generation to be able to see the, the world in the, in the correct sense rather than um, perhaps being dis having a, a distorted view. However, once you start to realize that there is that bias there, then you need to acknowledge it. You need to acknowledge it, but then you need to do the work to be able to become more aware so that you yeah, can, what you're saying, exactly yeah. what you're saying. Well, and I think so much of what we're seeing as well is that, you know, it's not even in the big moments, right? It's in the quiet moments where racism and unconscious bias lies, and mm -hmm. as you've said, lies and hides right. and thrives. And it's those nuances that I think is, makes it confusing for a lot of people. No, but you already showed me that one. So you have to show me everything. You know what, I'm just gonna hire someone to sit in front of your house or hide in the bushes and take pictures into your backyard because you've lost your right to privacy because you shared one image with me. Mm -hmm. That's sort of the flawed ar argument and it's operating mechanism that they're confusing people to think. To understand the role that they play in that, either passively or actively, but I think even more so passively. And so much of what I've come to the understanding of, especially in learning even more about it of late, and obviously having had personal experience with it as well, but in people's complacency, they're complicit. Yeah. It's because she says absolutely nothing. nothing. Yeah. She's a good little girl who keeps quiet and doesn't tell, doesn't complain, mm. doesn't exhale, doesn't yeah. do anything, doesn't rock the boat, and is a very traditional, old-fashioned, mute woman. And that, I think, is the shift that we're seeing, to go, it's not enough to just be a bystander and saying, well, it wasn't me. 
And that's what I think was very much manifested in, in what you're feeling from people's outpouring surrounding the murder of George Floyd. That if it wasn't that this wasn't always happening. It's that it's come to a head at a time where people just said, enough. Well, it's up to you guys because there's a lot of issues. You guys keep on adding to more stuff. Issues after issues. Look at the first tweet that I talk about. The UK people can't even pay their bills. The winters here, can, are they freezing? Uh, as recently as a couple of days ago, Byline um, YouTube channel was talking about some of the issues regular Brits are going through. All right, mold in their houses, uh, they can't pay their bills, you name it, housing crisis and all of that. But you guys focusing on royalists who don't give a damn about any of you, but more than happy that you guys are spreading lies and misinformation to bash on Megan specifically when she's just minding her own business. She doesn't even want to mention any of the names of none of your garbage tabloid. All right. Now, taking a look at poverty and health back here in Britain, the death of the young boy, Awab Ishak. And the conclusion was that toxic mold in his household led to his death. About our health system and health inequalities in this country, we're now joined by a GP, Sonia Adesera. Thank you for joining us, Sonia. Can you tell our viewers a bit about the inquest and this young boy's death and what emerged from it? Yeah, so it found that the cause of this death was mould in the house and young people, particularly babies, but also older elderly, are more sensitive to that. One of the reasons Catherine is so popular amongst certain demographics, and I'm going to say older people and yeah. men. Um, so we know that the impact that it has on health um, and... You know, it's just in this case stated quite explicitly that mould was the cause of the death. When I when I watched that case and I saw the news, I was it really hit me because I've spoken to many other parents. You know, particularly actually often mums, single mums, who um, so and actually an isolated case, case. It's not an isolated no. case, um, who are telling me that their housing conditions are appalling. Often it's you know social housing that they're talking about, living in damp housing or if you're living in cold housing. Look at the fact that just on energy alone, on a conservative estimate within one year, we're talking £1,300 a year going up in bills. We're going to have about 10 million people in fuel poverty. We have a real absolute, not relative poverty issue going to come in the UK with food banks oversubscribed, with debt crisis agencies do not have any tools. And I need to say, with the Chancellor coming on in a moment, if you could give me, as the money-saving expert who's been known for this, I am virtually out of tools to help people now. His Royal Highness, Prince Harry. He designed um, it. Well, overcrowded housing as well, it impacts your health, um, increases your risk of infections, increases your risk of hospital admissions. Um, and actually, you know, we talk about the cost of living crisis now, but over the past few years, we've been seeing conditions that people are living in, particularly the poorest in society, mm. has been getting worse. Um, Meghan Markle's smaller so that I may talk, squirrel. Um, in you know, living in, in the in most deprived parts parts of the country. Um, and also elderly people as well are particularly vulnerable to that. One of the reasons Catherine is so popular amongst certain demographics, and I'm going to say older people and yeah. men, um, and also elderly people as well are particularly vulnerable to that. Amongst certain demographics, and I'm going to say older people and yeah. men. So every year, you know, we, ha we talk about um, excess deaths in winter. Um, and that's because you know people are being, um, particularly elderly people. One of the reasons Catherine is so popular amongst certain demographics, and I'm going to say older people and yeah. men who are, you know, in their housing, they're living in cold, mm -hmm. and then they're, they're more likely to get get unwell and admitted to hospital. Um, and the excess deaths that we have in this country are more than the excess deaths that you have in colder countries such as Finland. Um, and that's just and that shows that it's the problem with our mm -hmm. housing. It's not something money management can fix. It's not something for those on the lowest incomes telling them to cut their belts will work. We need political intervention. People not being able to insulate their homes and not able to keep their homes warm during the winter. That's something that has been getting worse over the past few years and will get worse over this winter. You know, we know that. Hey everybody, Meghan Markle here. Call her so that I may talk, squirrel. To hospital um, and the excess deaths that we have in this country. Hello. My name is Harry, I'm from London. Desired. That's something that has been getting worse over the past few years and will get worse over this winter, you know, we know that.
collar so that I may talk. Squirrel! You decide. Squirrel!